guys leon here and as you know apple just released the unleashed video for the new line of macbook pros something i, I would say this is like the best macbook pro refresh since 2015 with the retina macbooks i'm really excited for for these new ones uh their lineup they completely got rid of intel which is great because i had the 16 inch intel and I actually preferred my M1 MacBook Air over the Intel laptop because it got so hot and the battery, like this set the bar so high where it's like a four to eight hour battery is not enough. With these new M1 chips, you're getting like these all day battery life. And, it's, and what is super crazy is that the new ones, you can get up to 21 hours of battery life, which is like amazing, especially especially since it's so powerful. But let's let's go back to uh, what if we get more into that later. Some of my recommendations off the bat. So this is like what you should buy. I don't really do this, but like bear with me. So if you do 4K video editing and the most you use is Final Cut, I would say you can get the base model last gen macbook pro because that handles 4k video editing well enough because i think these new these new cpus especially the gpu cores in this this is more for like raw video editing and 3d rendering which is freaking amazing like the new 16 inch macbook pro this is all i ever wanted i really wanted a high count gpu I'm the de demographic for these uh these these types of workstation. I do video, but I do mostly post production. So I use uh like DaVinci Resolve. I use Cinema 4D. I do a lot of 3D rendering. That's like heavy on that After Effects work and such. So these new machines are actually really pro machines. Like I think they really put their foot down and said, "Hey, we are not a gaming machine anymore. We don't game. You can't do boot camp on these things." There's no Windows partition, so this is strictly for content creation and work productions. So my recommendation for like if you do, if you do, as I said, if you do 4K video editing on your YouTube channel and you don't really use raw footage and you still use like MP4s and stuff like that, I think the, the previous gen MacBook Pros, the 13 inch is perfectly fine. I don't know if you should go up to this. If you want to spend the extra $500, then yeah. I won't really. This this I don't think is a good. I don't think the, the 14 inch is a good jump for, for that extra money. Because what you have is pretty, unless you, unless you do After Effects, you don't really need like 64 gigs. You know, After Effects will need, a program like After Effects will need as much. <laughs> Uh, memory give it like I have 128 gigs on my main machine and After Effects uses the 100 gigs of that So After Effects is like whatever you give it is gonna eat it. So I think 99% of you guys would be satisfied with the previous gen M ones The new ones as you see here, it's like ProRes Roar and all these type of stuff as you can see these new machines is more for heavy video editors so with the prores and the prores raw that's where you're going to get the extra gpu usage from and i think um if you're just doing youtube videos you can just stick with the previous one it actually has better battery life than the new 14 inch actually so yeah you're better with the 13 inch you're going to get a lot more uses on these on that Unless you just want to get that extra 32 gigs of RAM, which I think you don't, you don't, you don't really need that for like light YouTube editing. Um, another, another update is the brightness of thousand nits. So if you're outside and yeah, I think that would be good. But, uh, editing outside is a pain anyway. So especially in po post-production, if you're on set, you're going to be under shade. You usually try to be under shade because the color accuracy won't be that great because the sun is shining all on the screen. So pretty good, pretty good. Um, let's skip just for people like me, the heavy CG, CGI, you know, we are art directors. We do heavy CGI work. Uh, this could definitely work for you. So like 
we don't we don't have to heavily rely on these uh, windows machines and the loud fans I, i'm very curious to see how this runs with like heavy rendering with redshift and octane i i'm so freaking curious to see how how cool these things run on there um me personally for my choice i went with the highest end obviously so because i love post-production and i i like talking more about post-production than the casual use <laughs> usage so the specs i got i got the i basically got everything on the max i just upgraded it from the base model i just upgraded to 64 gigs um the reason i just upgraded the 64 gigs is that as i said you can change the ram but you can always change add storage and i don't I, I never really use more than one terabyte i barely even use 500 terabytes because cgi files are usually way lower than video files so i don't do a lot of video editing but even so um i never work on multiple projects at once and you can use services like dropbox and stuff to get extra storage and having two st and i don't really like putting that much type of data on a laptop or anything like that because you know the more storage you put on a you only can get the biggest drive that you don't mind losing so if i lose a, a one terabyte of data i'll be fine but yeah this is what i got i got the 64 gigs and one terabyte ssd ssd storage that i rarely even use on my main machines i'll I always edit off for ssd anyway if i have to but yeah, I, I never, I never really needed more than one terabyte. So this is gonna last me a long time, and that's pretty much all I got. I mean, I really like the fact that the Pro machine is just super. Like, there's really less options on there. It's just like, hey, 64 gigs. That's it. that's all I need. We're ready to go. And I think this is uh pretty decent. The price is pretty decent too for what you get. So as you can see, the new GPUs uh it's actually really it's much more than the previous generation. The previous generation had a as you see my last video I did had a that was actually a seven core with a MacBook Air and it had pretty good speed. So you guys let me know for my review of the MacBook Pro, let me know what type of software you guys want me to use. Um I'm trying to stay away from 4K video exporting, those type of um benchmarks. I'm trying to stay away from benchmarks and I'm trying to stay away from 4K video editing export MP4 type um videos because i think um it's, it's not going to make a really good review because it's like last gen was so powerful like i think we kind of like we we, we, we above the trash threshold now so what i'm what i'm planning on doing um i'm planning on creating um cinema 4d files that um i'll create some artworks there that i'll share with you guys so you guys could actually you know benchmark it on your desktop to see how fast is going i'm also going to be doing some work in davinci resolve so i'll be i'll share those projects file with you so we can see and com you know compare and contrast with your machine like even here you can see how faster it is than the previous 5600m like it's four times faster so this is going to be nuts i think it, this gpu is on the level of probably if it's if it's like a 2080 or 2080 ti i think we are really good so as always thanks for watching uh please like and subscribe for more videos uh this was kind of pretty this was unscripted so yeah things are all over the place but um yeah i can't wait to get my hands on my new laptop it should be here november 5th so i'll do a short unboxing video and do some quick renders and yeah let's get this up to speed it's really good to see mac apple is taking the pro market seriously again and yeah, um, I can't wait to do more videos on it. So please let me know which kind of software you want me to use or which one you want to see get tested. Um, yeah, so let's make this happen.